think for most of us, when we start a diet, it's with all of the best intentions. It's the intention to lose weight and create a better life for ourselves. And what's really interesting is how the exact opposite is what happens with dieting. You want to lose weight quick. You want to get intense. You're motivated. You have all the willpower in the world and it ends up just backfiring. In today's video, I'm gonna get into why it is that diets don't work, what happens when you stop dieting, and what the benefits of not dieting can be. Hi, I'm Rachel. Thank you so much for watching. I create videos sharing what I'm doing to be my best self and live my best life in a way that brings value and gets to the point. If that resonates with you, would love for you to subscribe. But first, for you to get anything out of this video, I ask that just for the next few minutes, you consider the possibility that not dieting does not mean that you are going to go off the rails. As a matter of fact, you may be stunned, as I have been, to find out that by not dieting, those foods you once obsessed with, the foods that you wanted to make sweet, sweet love to, are not nearly as appealing as they were when you were dieting. And that actually you can end up looking better and feeling better and living better by letting go of all that BS. And guess what? There's actually science, research, data, facts to back all of this up. So you've probably heard the phrase before, probably many times, that diets don't work. And what do you honestly think when you hear that? Because I can tell you what I used to think. What are you talking about? Of course diets work. You can't tell me that fitness competitors eat nothing but chicken and greens for weeks on end and don't see the results of that. Of course diets work. Now on the surface, that's absolutely true. That short term diets do work. But it's the long term that's... <laughs> So here's what the scientists, dietitians, that whole group of people mean when they say that diets don't work. You remember that show, The Biggest Loser? Well, there was an in-depth clinical research study on the contestants and how their bodies responded to diets. And here's a rundown of what they found. First, their metabolism slowed as a result of calorie restriction, which we've all heard that before, right? Okay, sure. It also took longer to burn calories not just because they were losing weight and you know the more weight you have like usually the more calories you'll burn not just because they lost weight were they burning less calories but their muscles were using less energy all right so their metabolism slowed they're not burning as many calories then they had this hormone ghrelin which increased now if you're not familiar ghrelin is that hunger hormone it's what makes you feel hungry it's what's responsible for that. It's also the reason why smoking green gives you the munchies. So they're hungrier. Cool. All right. Their metabolism's reduced. They're not burning as many calories. <laughs> Compound that with the hormone leptin, which is responsible for the satiety you feel when you have a meal, letting you know that you've had enough food. That was greatly reduced. It's also responsible for increasing your metabolism. So that was all suppressed. All these factors working against sustained weight loss. So let me pause there. They're hungrier. It's more difficult to recognize when they're full. And cherry on top, metabolism reduced. <laughs> when I re read this research, I can't help but think, no wonder when I was binge eating, my stomach was a bottomless pit. I had all these hormones working to make me hungrier and reducing my sense of satiety, all the result of me starving myself. If that isn't enough, tack on the fact that food becomes more tempting when you're under calorie restrictions. It's why you dream about food while you're on a diet. Or that may just be me. As awful as all of that sounds, this is just your body working from all angles to keep you from starving yourself. And it's actually pretty incredible. And it really underscores the point that diets don't work. Now, old me would have thought, I have the willpower. I know that I can get it together. Yes, it's been hard for me before. Yes, I've binged, but I can be that future self I wanna be. Yes, hormones are strong, but I can will myself through it. That's what old me would have thought. 
Now, let's just be realistic for a second here. Even if you can sustain that willpower, how realistic is it that you're gonna be able to sustain that day after day after year after year when every fiber of your genetic makeup is driving you to eat. How realistic is it for you to actually sustain that willpower? It's why you become obsessed with food when you're on a diet. It's why despite all the great things going on in your life, you can't stop thinking about food. You can't stop thinking about the weight. It just becomes your world. So that's what the scientists and dietitians mean by diets don't work. Besides, if diets worked, wouldn't everybody or at least a majority of people be skinny by now? All right, Rachel, we get it. But what does it actually look like to stop dieting? That's when I reference a life-changing book called The Rules of Normal Eating. Notice the quotations around normal. Everyone has a different type of normal. First, let me reassure you that this is not a book that simply walks through, eat when you're hungry, stop eating when you're not. It's also not just another intuitive eating book. No, the author goes much deeper. There were so many aha moments I had when reading this book. For instance, she calls out how strong our beliefs, feelings, and thoughts play into how we approach food. There are different exercises she has to really understand this, but in the way of beliefs, I was able to recognize how often I eat when I'm not even hungry, simply because it's time to eat, or I don't know if this will be my last opportunity to eat. I had a long-standing belief that if it was the opportunity to eat, I had to take it. And that was really because growing up, that's kind of how it was. Hey, it's dinner time. If you're not gonna eat dinner, there's not gonna be another opportunity for you to eat. So you better eat now. And at a younger age, that was a rational belief. Oh, hey, I've gotta take this opportunity. But now as an adult, when I have so much more control over my resources, it's not a rational belief anymore. So I believed that if there was an opportunity to eat, I had to take it. And I was able to discredit that belief and change my behaviors because of it. So now if I go out to dinner, and this has now happened multiple times, if I go out to dinner just because it's scheduled or whatever, and I'm not hungry, I don't eat. I'm not talking going out to dinner and I'm already full. I'm talking, I'm not hungry. I don't have hunger cues, so I'm not gonna eat. Now, the old me would have never thought that was possible because hey, this is, hey, you're out to dinner. Of course you eat. So it's worth noting that what often causes people to gain weight is when they eat when they're not actually hungry. And I think about all the times that I was eating when I wasn't hungry and maybe it was uh, what I would call a safe food but I wasn't hungry, so why was I doing that? Another big aha moment was the author's take on the difference between full versus satisfied and what the difference is. How often have you had a meal and technically you're full, but the meal really didn't hit the spot? It's not that you need more food, but you don't feel satisfied. There have been so many times where I had a smoothie bowl or a salad or even some type of meal that wasn't really what I was craving. What I really wanted was a steak or pretzels or a piece of chocolate. And by the time I actually would give in to eating what I really wanted, say those pretzels, watch out. I was, there was no stopping me and I would binge on it. If I just tuned into what I wanted in the first place and ate that thing, might I have been better than to then binge eat on it? While I was reading this book, I was actually in the midst of my rapid transformational therapy journey. And I do have a detailed review on that, which I highly recommend you watch because that was a big piece of me reaching the point at where I'm at today, but so was this book. And there's so many parallels between Rapid Transformational Therapy, or RTT, in this book, The Rules of Normal Eating, which is why I found it to be somewhat divine. And you may even find it to be divine that you're watching this video right now. Anyways, as I was reading the book, The Rules of Normal Eating, I began experimenting with some of the concepts. To simplify it, I'd sum it up into experimenting with three things. And for the record, if there are any already normal eaters or lifetime normal eaters, this is gonna sound absolutely ridiculous, but for anyone that's struggled with food issues, 
we're already speaking the same language, so you'll 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 probably get it. So here it goes. The first piece was, I'm only gonna eat when I'm hungry. If I mess up, that's fine, no big deal, but I'm gonna try it out. Number two, when I'm hungry, I'm gonna ask myself and tune into what it is I actually want to eat. Again, normal eaters, this sounds insane. This sounds so obvious. But for someone who's a chronic dieter and doesn't even think about what they actually want, only eats foods they think they should be eating, this is revolutionary. Then we have number three, which is tuning in while I'm eating. That means, am I still hungry right now? Am I satisfied? Have I had enough? Not letting it get too far down where I'm overly full or uncomfortable, but just reaching a, a comfortable, satisfied level for me. Usually that means a type of neutral. I'm not full, but I'm also not hungry anymore. Just something comfortable. And really everyone's different, so it's a matter of what you prefer, what works best for you. So those are the big three things that seem ridiculously simple. I cannot relay how big of a deal these three things have been for me. Now, I, like I said earlier, I can go out to dinner or be out at an event with friends, and if I'm not hungry, I don't eat. And if that means that maybe people are judging me or wondering, oh, why hasn't she eaten anything? Okay, but I really respect my hunger. If I'm not hungry, I'm not gonna eat. I recognize now, since identifying that belief that this is not my only opportunity to eat, you know, I'm gonna respect my hunger cues and eat when my body tells me I'm hungry. Not eating for the sake of eating. And what's great is now I can keep sweets in the house and different foods in the house and trust myself. I'm not concerned that I'm just going to eat all that's available like I did when I was constantly dieting. It's so remarkable that sometimes I think to myself, who am I? Who is this person? I never ex never thought in a million years that this would be me. That's great, good for you. I know, I know. But here's the kicker, and since you've stuck around this long, you deserve a kicker. My physique is so much better now, now that I respect my hunger. And I keep on saying respect hunger because that resonates so much more with me than intuitive eating does. But that's really what I'm getting at is just speaking about how I've adopted intuitive eating. But that terminology just makes me think of all of these rules and requirements to just get at eating when you're hungry and recognizing what you actually want and recognizing when you're actually done eating. I find saying respect hunger resonates so much more for me than intuitive eating. Intuitive, intuitive eating just seems like a lot of work to me. So my physique is so much better now that I respect my hunger. My bloating is so much less because my body isn't digesting all of this unnecessary fuel that would happen when I was eating when I wasn't hungry. Now don't get me wrong, it happens. There are times where, especially during my cycle, where I'm so much hungrier or I just feel like I need some comfort food, that still certainly happens. But for the most part, I'm letting my hunger dictate when I should eat and what I should eat and how much I should eat. That's all my hunger, it's not a diet. So I'm looking better, but much more than that, I'm not food obsessed. It's like food has been demystified, destigmatized. It has lost its power over me. To validate my experience, research has shown that intuitive eaters or eaters that respect their hunger are less likely to be overweight and spend less time thinking about food. Whereas, dieters are more likely to binge eat. So it's the reason why you start a diet on Monday and by Thursday, Friday, you find yourself eating everything in sight. So for the folks out there who are struggling with excessive eating, restricting, dieting, binging, if you feel like your life is ruled by food, that kind of love-hate relationship, could you imagine what that's like to not have that rule you anymore? It's huge to say, eh, I'm not hungry, and move on with your life. What that translates to and why I'm so very happy, and it's not just because of my physique, it's that I feel this sense of freedom, freedom. The food thoughts don't consume my life anymore. That is freedom. 
So my intention for this video is really to relay that that type of freedom is possible. And for someone like me and my history, truly, if I can do it, and everyone that knows me would probably agree to, if I can do it, you can certainly do it. It's more than possible. It's much more easier and enjoyable than any diet. So as great as my soapbox speech may be, please do something kind for yourself and read or listen to this book. And if you need to, like me, read it twice. This is this book is not just about food. It is so much more than that. And that's why I think it's so powerful. If you do get this book and you have your own aha moments, I would love to read them in the comments below. I could go on and on as you can tell, but the key takeaway here is that life with food freedom is absolutely possible. And it doesn't mean that you're gonna go get, gain a lot of weight or lose all control. Actually, life can be much easier. If anything, you may be pleasantly surprised, just as I have been, that you may actually like your body more than when you were dieting. I really just wanna say that having the life of your dreams is possible. It's simply a matter of identifying what you want and what's in your way before deciding what you need to do. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you wanna learn more about what I'm doing to create my own dream life, you know the drill. Would love for you to like this video. Would love for you to comment below. And of course, to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.